Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers. On the program today, the third announced Republican candidate for Jim Gibbons' congressional seat. Paul Enos has the rundown. Assemblywoman Sharon Angle is collecting signatures for a property tax relief and running for Congress. We're going to talk to this anti-establishment candidate. Sam? And on the Power of Pundit panel today, Marlene Lockhart, Jason Geddes, Michael Hackett, and George Harris. It's all coming up next on an all-new Nevada Newsmakers. Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, the world's largest industrial park, the resort at Red Hawk, and the Peppermill family of casinos. Welcome to the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, just 10 minutes east of Sparks. We're proud that Walmart and other Fortune 500 companies have chosen Tahoe Reno Industrial Center to relocate their businesses. We have sites from under five acres to well over 500 acres, and with all of the amenities that every successful corporation requires. Welcome to the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, the largest industrial park in the world, and we're building economic prosperity for Nevadans. Something spectacular has taken wing not far from Reno or Lake Tahoe, and never far from your mind. An escape of fine dining and legendary golf. Introducing the resort at Red Hawk. And at the center of it all, we've feathered our nest with new villas that have elevated Red Hawk to the status of a premier resort. The Resort at Red Hawk, a beautiful new arrival in northern Nevada. As an employer, did you know you can be held liable for negligent hiring? A background screening by employer links can uncover criminal records, like alcohol and drug convictions. It can verify the applicant's education, driving records, and professional licenses. Employer links can check civil records, registered sex offender records, and social security fraud. Hiring the right person shouldn't be a gamble. Call employer links. <sighs> employer links, protecting your investment. So, uh, who do you use for workers' comp? Pro Group Management. Ah, I've heard some good things about them. Oh, you bet. Employee background checks, safety training, claim seminars. Oh, and here's the great part. If you have an issue, they work for you, not against you. Sounds perfect. And expensive. Well, that's the best part. They saved me 30%. I've heard they've saved others 50%. Works for me. Pro Group Management. Finally, workers' comp that works for you. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shan, a no holds barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shan. And we welcome to the program Assemblywoman Sharon Angle, who's running for Jim Gibbons' congressional seat. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much, Sam. Assemblywoman Angle, you, you're kind of seen as the anti establishment candidate. You're running against a sitting Secretary of State, you're running against the wife of a congressman. Have you had a challenge raising money or getting any traction in your campaign? Well, not really. You know, I get a lot of donations from Nevadans, but my average donation is about $96.80, and it is well below what the reporting is for FEC, so you won't see all of those Nevadans. But also, I'm just known nationally as the leading fiscal conservative in Nevada, and so a lot of people from out of state have been donating to my campaign. So I, I think that I'm going to be able to compete financially. Would it be appropriate to say that you've gotten the bulk of your money so far from out of state, and will that be used as a club against you? Well, as I said, I'm not sure that that's, that's exactly the, the way it is. I do get a lot of Nevada donations, but uh, yeah, I think that um, that's a fair assessment that all of the uh, candidates in this race are going to get outside money. Club for Growth has endorsed you. You're actually the first candidate. This is a national organization who supports conservative, fiscally conservative Republicans, and they were the first. You were the first candidate they endorsed this year. Can you tell us a little bit about the Club for Growth and what that endorsement means to your campaign? Well, I think you said it all. They're, they're fiscal conservatives. They saw me as the fiscal conservative in this race, and that's why they've thrown their backing behind me. They agree with my views, and you know, it, all the people that support you don't necessarily agree with them, but they agree with me, and that's why they're supporting me. And they've assisted you in raising. I think at the time, the, at the last report, it was almost 160 thousand dollars in only a few weeks that's right 
All right, let, let's talk about one of the things that, that, that is a big piece of what you're running on, which is uh, uh, reviving your Prop Proposition 13 type initiative. Um, there's a lot of concern in the state. Uh, Barbara Buckley was quoted in the Reno Gazette Journal as saying, I believe it will deprive schools of desperately needed funds with the primary beneficiary being out-of-state land speculators. Um, is she right about that? And, and can you explain what, what this Proposition Type 13 uh, piece of legislation would actually do? Well, in a nutshell, our Angle Property Tax Restraint Initiative has the three things. It has the base rate on your taxable value at 2000 three 2004 values at 1%, can't go up any more than 2% per year, and the valuation on your home does not change until you sell the home. Everything from Ronald Reagan winning the White House to O.J. Simpson's acquittal has been blamed on Prop 13 in California, so I would just say we, we'll have to wait and see. I think that we're going to find that this is revenue neutral, and really all that it really provides is stable and predictable tax base for our property owners no, in Nevada. A lot of people, especially in the rural communities, are saying that this initiative will harm the ability for them to fund their government. How do you respond to, to that? Well, I'll just point you to the Ely Daily Times today front page said that their revenues in White Pine County are up 59 percent on taxes. So I just rest my case. I don't think that we're going to harm anyone with this. We're just going to help Nevada taxpayers keep stable and predictable property taxes. What do you think about the Taxpayer Bill of Rights? I mean... I think it's an excellent thing. It's part of our trilogy. I'm calling it our trilogy of property tax protection or property uh, owner protection. Uh, the Taxpayer Bill of Rights or Tax and Spend Control for Nevada actually puts spending limitations on government, which is the other side of the tax restraint coin. If you don't have it, what you're going to have is um, increases in other taxes and fees. The third part of this trilogy is the eminent domain that we're going to be bringing out probably tomorrow or next week. And what that does is it says that the activist judiciary cannot do what they've done in New England and say that your private property is worth more to the public in another private owner's hands because of the tax revenue. So we're just going to stop eminent domain abuses in Nevada. And so that's the, the three-pronged approach that we're using. Okay, but people still say that, that the school system, for example, in California is still suffering from the effects of Proposition 13. Well, what, what you have to look at is how much they're paying their teachers. They're paying their teachers more than we're paying them here in Nevada. You also have to look at where Nevada is on the scale. We're well below California even on the NAEP test. So, you know, I don't see how our education system could get any worse. We really need to look at systemic changes for education. It's not just throwing money. But we're bringing in teachers from the Philippines to be able to help out in southern Nevada at this point. And, and shouldn't we be looking at perhaps paying uh, teachers a higher salary? Absolutely. Absolutely. Sharon, let's get back to your campaign for a minute. Um, in the past, you have not taken any money from casinos, unions, or PACs. In a federal race, I guess that has to be a little different because you can't raise money from, from corporations or, or associations. So you have to turn to the PACs. Has that been difficult? No, it hasn't been difficult because the reason I took that stand is because of the cynicism of the voter in my district. They have felt that the legislature was controlled by special interests, and I said, you know, I want to show you my good faith effort, and I won't take the money from special interests so that you can trust me. They do trust me. They see my voting record. They know that I vote for them. And now I need to take the PAC money because it's a federal race. As you said, we're in a different ball game altogether, and so I will be taking PAC money from those PACs that agree with my point of view. Okay, let's, take, oh, let's <laughs> take a break. We'll be right back on Nevada News. Mix. Hold it right there. We'll be right back. For a videotape copy of any Nevada Newsmakers program, call 775-857-2244. The tapes are $20 each, including shipping. Since its creation more than a decade ago, the Southern Nevada Water Authority has focused on three goals. Preserving water quality, improving water conservation in Southern Nevada, and meeting the community's current and future water needs. Through thoughtful planning, responsible management, and collaboration, it's succeeding. As we move into the 21st century, the authority continues to embrace sustainable water development and efficient water use. That's our promise to Nevada. My family started this business 27 years ago. We work hard to serve our customers and our community. But it's getting harder and harder to keep the doors open. 
For example, our workers' comp is going through the roof. Isn't anyone on my side anymore? The Retail Association of Nevada is. If you're a small business owner, we can cut your workers' comp by up to 50%, lobby for your interests, and keep you informed. Put us to work today. At the Pepper Mill. Thanks to an ongoing commitment by America's mining companies, more than two million acres already have been reclaimed. To learn more about reclamation or other aspects of mining, visit nma.org. The National Mining Association. And now, back to Nevada Newsmakers with Sam Shad. And we're talking with Sharon Engel. She's running for Congress for Jim Gibbons' seat that will become available in the next election cycle. I just want to finish the last question. I tried to get in there the last uh, few seconds of the break, before the break. Will you take PAC money from casinos or unions? Yes. Uh, Why the change part? Par pardon me? Well, because it's a change of race. You know, before I could run an assembly district race on $40,000 and a lot of shoe leather, it's going to take a lot of media this time and just more money. And, you know, frankly, I just have to get my message out. And I said, those people who agree with my point of view, I will take their money. So you, so you consider the unions uh, uh, looking for a fiscally conservative candidate? I doubt that they will. So that's <laughs> kind of surprising. So why would they be uh, supporting you? I doubt that they will. Well, I, I, oh, yeah, oh, so, so bottom line is, if they <laughs> offer yeah. it, we'll take it. But at this point, the phone hasn't run. Uh, that's you know, right. I, I, you have a website. They can go to the website that's and register right. if they want to. Okay. That's Do you right. think that'll help? You talked about the cynicism, cynicism with the voters in your district. Do you think that change of heart with those interest groups might foster some of that cynicism if they elect you to Congress? I don't think so. My voting record stands. I'm, um, I, I've stood against all odds here. You know, I have a 41 to 1 vote in many, many instances. I'm tough when it comes to voting. They know that. They're very secure, I think, with the way I stand for them. And I think these initiatives even prove that more, that I'm looking out for their best interests. Okay, you know, uh, I, I would certainly consider you an ethical person, but in, uh, in 2003, there was a bill that made various changes to the state ethics reporting laws. It passed the Senate 21-0, mm -hmm. and it passed the Assembly, as you put it, 41-1. Why did you vote against it? Because there were no accountabilities on that ethics thing. It was a very wide open um, uh, restriction. It was three strikes and you're out. And it didn't have a time frame, so in the 20 years of your tenure, if you made three personal phone calls home, Technically, three strikes, you're out. I said, there has to be some sideboards on here, some time limitation or some degree. It can't, is it more than a personal phone call home on the, on the public phone? Is it more than an, an email that responds to a private message on your, on your computer? What is it that constitutes the thir three strikes? And actually, our impeachment process works. It worked with uh, Controller Augustine. It gave her a fair trial in the Senate. We said, yes, there was something here that needed to be investigated as an impeachable offense. It needs to go for a trial. I think the process works the way it is, and that's why I voted out. Well, it's kind of funny, though, that she, she pled guilty and paid the fines and then ended up not being impeached. I, I just found that a little interesting. Talk, talking about your vote record, Sharon, some people will say that in the legislature that you're difficult to work with and that you're ineffective, that you don't get any of your bills passed. What do you say to those well, let's look Sorry. at who the some people are. They're usually politicians and lobbyists, and of course, I don't vote for special interests. I vote for my constituency. They're very happy with my votes, and I'll tell you, those no votes are the things that have gotten us some of the relief that we have now. When I brought my uh, Proposition 13, that was what put the pressure on the legislature to give it this, uh, the albeit unconstitutional relief we have, but the relief that we have in property taxes. It's my no votes 
that actually calmed that situation down. And, uh, you know, the, I was the only no vote on the tax increase that the governor vetoed. So I think my no votes are very effective. But I have some, had some effective le legislation as well. My Nevada Reading Excellence Act that brought phonics into reading and also my human trafficking bill this time I think are very effective pieces of legislation. Okay. Sharon Angle gets elected to Congress or well let's let's just pretend we're uh, we're down the road now you're elected to Congress how are you going to be more effective in Congress than you would be in the Nevada legislature. Well, there's more just like me. That's what I want to do is go and join those other conservative legislatures later there who are actually gaining momentum as the majority of the majority. I want to do four things when I get back there. I want to take my tax and spend policy there. I want to say no more taxes, uh, limited taxes, less government regulation. I want to see us repeal the uh, death tax. I want to keep the cap on the capital gains tax. I want to see well, the alternative you, okay, minimum hang on, hang on. tax eliminated. Okay, on the death tax. Uh, uh -huh. This is at a time when we have a war going on in Iraq mm -hmm. and we have the effects of Hurricane Katrina and we certainly have plenty of problems in this country that we're going to be facing. Um, that is a tax that basically affects the super rich. It really does not come down it really does not absolutely. come down. I, I hate to, but absolutely no, no, you, you, not, you, you Sam. Can, that's, that's complete uh, garbage. There know, are everyday fellas, people fellas. who have businesses who are affected by the but, death tax. Uh, but but you, could, you could put a much lower cap on that okay. than, than, than helping the super. Okay. Well, let's let the, okay, let's so let the candidate answer I, the question. I just think that, uh, that whenever we've seen tax breaks for the entire population of Nevada, our economy is stimulated. I mean, not just Nevada, but the United States. Our, our economy is stimulated, and we have more revenues to spend on things like Iraq. Well, yeah, but I one of the pro one of the problem is, is though, that the, the spending is out of control. I mean, as a fiscal Absolutely. conservative, and I agree Absolutely. with you as a fiscal conservative, that, that the way that we're spending money right now is like a drunken sailor, and it needs to stop. Well, parties. and that's why I have co-sponsored the tax and spend controls for Nevada, and I want to take that same policy of limited spending for government to Washington, D.C. The next thing I want to tackle is the immigration reform. We need to do something about securing our borders, not just the southern border, but our Canadian border. You know, it's twice as long and has 10 percent of the personnel along uh, the Canadian we border, also, so we need may, to secure the borders. Maybe we could support borders. President Bush's uh, guest worker program. Well, well be a you good know, thing. Make it easier for people to come in, because obviously they need uh, to come the in visa for the jobs. System that needs to be looked at. The visa system does need to be looked at, but we also need to enforce the laws that we already have in place. So the, those guys Darn that are law impossible. well, Darn near impossible. but we have a 1996 uh, law in place that says that local law enforcement can cooperate when they pick up on, they, on just... They don't have any place to put them. Traffic. They don't have any place to put them. And if they're, if they're not from Mexico, then they give them a ticket and ask them to appear in court, and 85% well, don't show up. You know, I was, I was in Arizona. For, for another day. For okay. another day. We we'll welcome okay, you my back. My other things are the energy we'll policy. We'll welcome you back. And we're, also we're out of time. We'll be right back on Nevada <laughs> Newsmakers. This is Nevada Newsmakers. Corporations moving to the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center require reliable power, fiber optic communication, and clean water sources. And yet, there's another amenity we're very proud of here at TRI, rail service. So far, we've built over two miles of railroad track, and another 3.6 is under construction. When companies need to transport freight, we're going to help them move it quickly and efficiently. Welcome to the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, the largest industrial park in the world, building economic prosperity for Nevadans. The Nevada Beer Wholesalers encourages the responsible consumption of beer. The Nevada Beer Wholesalers Association are sponsors and participants in many community-based efforts such as school education programs, safe ride home, recycling programs, alcohol-free after-prom and graduation parties, safe voting campaigns, and designated driver programs. They are family-owned businesses employing 2,000 Nevadans. They also collect and pay the state excise tax. The Nevada Beer Wholesalers Association, delivering more than just beer. Dave, I'm telling you, it's all in the follow-through. Actually, Dave, it's all in the putting. No matter how you swing, it's a classic opportunity to play for local organizations. That's why we're teeing off in the Kess Classic at Wolf Run on September 15th. Arts Tournament will benefit Care Chests of Sierra Nevada, providing free medical supplies to those in need, and help our local seroptimists support the community. Hey, Dave, you've got the perfect score. 
Something spectacular has taken wing not far from Reno or Lake Tahoe and never far from your mind. An escape of fine dining and legendary golf. Introducing the resort at Red Hawk. And at the center of it all, we've feathered our nest with new villas that have elevated Red Hawk to the status of a premier resort. The resort at Red Hawk, a beautiful new arrival in northern Nevada. And now, back to Nevada Newsmakers with Sam Shad. Well, Sam Shad's not on the Panda panel, so it's me. We have Marlene Lockhart, Capital Strategies. Mike Hackett, All Risk Consulting, Jason Geddes, former Assemblyman, and George Harris, Liberty Watch Magazine. Marlene, you just watched Sharon Angle's interview. Can you give us uh, your thoughts on a Congresswoman Angle? Well, I think that uh, this race is going to be very, very interesting because you have uh, three people in the Republican primary and now just announced candidate Jill Derby. To give a little bit of balance, there's a, a candidate on the other side. Either way, out of the Republican primary, I think you're going to have a conservative Republican go to D.C., um, whoever emerges from from that uh, primary and campaign. And who is the conservative Republican in that race? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I don't know. They have a litmus test. We should all give them who can block taxes more than the next guy. I hey, guess. that works for me. Jason? <laughs> what? <laughs> Congress, Congress so it's good to have what? Jason on the panel. <laughs> I think it's going to be a nice. It, it's going to be a horse race right to the end. I mean, I, I would have to put Heller as the front runner since he's he's run two statewide races. So he, three he's out there. Races, three. three. That's right. Um, Givens just by name confusion. Uh, name recognition, but <laughs> Don and Sharon. That's where you'll get a that, phone call from the guy well. race. But, <laughs> but Don and Sharon have both proved to be uh, outstanding campaigners. They work hard. They work to the finish line. It's going to be a tight three-way race, I think. I, I Mike, think who's the conservative? George, hold on oh. there, Newt. Who's oh, the conservative I'm, candidate in that? Oh, I think obviously Sharon's a conservative candidate in that. I don't think you're ever going to confuse Don Gibbons with being a, a total conservative. She's much more moderate. Um, I really can't comment on the Secretary of State. I really don't know politically where his leanings are. If he's more middle of the fence or if he um, if he really does tend to go to the right but Mike, I think, do you I think, think it hurts do you think it hurts the Secretary of State in a Republican primary that he's been endorsed by Governor Gwen? <laughs> uh, not yet. No, actually I don't <laughs> think it does. George? I, I actually in bizarre fashion I agree with Mike. No one knows where Dean Heller is. Dean Heller certainly isn't the front runner in the race. Uh, well, he's raised the most money. You, you take a look at Because the, you raise the most money doesn't mean you're going to win the race. That's but three the, statewide races. I mean, and, he's, and he's got and, and, he's and, to be the front And, you know, Dean's got, Dean's polls, got a though. lot of stuff to answer for his, as, as Secretary of State. A lot of bungling has been taking place in that office. Um, and there's, there's going to be a lot of problems. Sharon is the conservative. Sharon's got the, uh, the wait, property tax Wait a minute, issue. George. To say a lot of bungling oh, has taken you, place in that, that listen, office. Listen, listen. Marlene's not, protecting it's, it's a Republican. Marlene, you, let's you, let you, her go yeah, for a second. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way I'm going to get to talk on this show. <laughs> but I think when you look at what Dean Heller has done in that office and streamlined many different aspects, added technology to the office, and returned money, to pay for the technology yeah. improvements in that office. I, I say right now, if we got a minute, why don't we just get a speakerphone and call the Secretary of State's office and try to talk to a human within a 30-minute period because it's not going to happen. Because oh, the no, office is an absolute, it's in a debacle shambles. You can call that office any time. I, I challenge each of you when you get done to okay. pick up the phone and call that office and well, try to get through uh, to a human. I would disagree. I agree. Businesses I agree. are coming to the state. My businesses are coming to the state. They're coming to the state with because the private industry. That's right. Private industry is the one going over and dealing with the Secretary of State's office. That's right. If an individual, no if an individual wants to try to get hold of the, a regular layman who doesn't understand the process to try to go file their paperwork, they might jump off a building. But let's talk about. Oh, well, well, wait, wait, hold on, hold on here, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's let, let's just hold on. I let's. Boy, I don't. I don't want to get. I don't want to get too off. I can't even make a point. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Marlene, you talked about Jill. Um, Derby. Jill Derby getting into the race mm -hmm. as kind of being a balancing effect. Do you think that there is any possible chance a D has of winning a very Republican seat in Northern Nevada? 
Well, I think if this continues and all the Republicans kill each other in the primary, that Jill has a very good chance. It is a very uphill battle for a Democrat in that race. But she is a respected uh, member of the Board of Regents. The Board of Regents is in a very respected body. <laughs> this, this is she a is a respected well. member. However, the Board of Regents have had their their issues and their problems, but Jill Derby is an outstanding candidate. Being I a respected member of the Board of Regents is kind of like being a madam in a whorehouse. The Republican, like the, Republican the, Republican primary. the Republican primary is a race, but can it we is. talk about you know Tabor and, and property tax and important issues that face families you know, in this state? Why don't we and not talk about that, George? Why don't we talk about governing by initiative petition? And you see all these Marlene, candidates. Marlene, that's what the Constitution no, allows. Yeah, every race, every election, and now we're adding imminent. No, Domain. Why do you, but why do you the think last that legislative happened? session well, why already, do you think, Marlene, why already do you addressed think imminent domain. Why do you so think now that you've happened? got all these candidates who have made a career out of being elected on initiative petitions. Why do you think and now that that's exactly happened? what's happening. Well, why, initiative why do you think these initiatives though, why do you think these initiatives gain so much traction? Because the people let Mike talk. Why do these initiatives have so much traction? Because they had very populist things. It's really in the general message it's sent out. It's not in the details of what the long term and even the short term ramifications of these exactly. are. I think you saw that with the minimum and wage. And nobody petition. reads the fine print. And how about and the fact that the people are frustrated because the legislature is afraid to do their job? That when you bring up to the problem, hey, listen, we have we a should massive hold problem. Legislators with accountable because that is their job. This is a republic. It's Jason, as a, as a former democracy. legislator, the only one who's they, been elected they to respond the, to that. They passed the 3%, 8% cap. I agree that it is on Scott. Constitutional, but they passed it. It was an issue. Mm -hmm. They addressed it, and they passed Why it. Why did they pass it, though? I, it, listen, you because asking of the public pressure and the public because outcry. Because was public you public. Sharon Angle and other groups oh, saying, just you've got okay. to get I'm going to let I'm gonna, because I'm gonna, everybody was getting their property tax bill. <laughs> Thank you very much. And they much. all showed up at the legislature. I appreciate everybody being on the panel. Thank you guys Thanks very much. Us. We'll be back. You want to just take yeah. Nevada News Brought to you in part by the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, the world's largest industrial park, the resort at Red Hawk, and the Peppermill family of casinos. South Reno's hotspot for food, fun, and friends is the Tamarack Junction. Enjoy great food 24 hours a day in the dining car restaurant. For a quick bite and the best sandwiches in town, it's the Whistle Stop Deli. And for the best appetizers and menu selections, and a large variety of cocktails, beers, and martinis, it's Sully's Sports Bar, Grill, and Nightclub. The Tamarack Junction is your junction for fun. South Virginia and Monty Ranch Parkway. Island Inkjet is now open on South Meadows Parkway. Island Inkjet will refill your inkjet cartridges in just one hour. We have the ink to precisely match over 240 cartridges, saving you up to 60% on the cost of buying a new cartridge. Our work is 100% guaranteed, and contrary to what you may have heard, refills do not void any printer warranties. You don't throw out your car when it runs out of gas. Don't throw out your cartridges. Refill them at Island Inkjet on South Meadows Parkway by Smith's. Among the guests next week, Barbara Buckley and Walt Higgins. We'll see you next week on Nevada Newsmakers.